Yeah, and obviously just kind of on old firm stuff. Um, it's kind of we talked uh, we've talked a lot about the fan allocation this season. It seems like same situation next season with limited away fans at both at both the Celtic and Rangers games. But there's supposedly going to be discussions over the longer term with the police, etc. But I mean, what what do, what do you see happening? Do you think that we'll ever get back to a bigger allocation for away fans? I really hope so. I mean, I loved it as a player uh, going to Celtic Park or when you were playing at Ibox against Celtic and the, the crowd was there. That made the atmosphere. It's something you wanted to be a part of. So to have it in the situation we're in at this moment in time, I think is terrible. Something needs to be sorted. I mean, to have a handful of supporters to witness one of the biggest games uh, against one of your biggest rivals is, I think it's really, it's poor. So hopefully in the future they can come meet at the table, have some discussions about it and kind of work it out because it's obviously better. It just adds to the occasion if, if both sets of supporters are there. Yeah, well, it's just like, I mean, I think we've spoken before, but you look at the likes of the cup final and, you know, Hamden's split and all that. It's just like, you can just see it as it is so much better. But do, I mean, how do you think they get around it? It's a difficult one by obviously sitting around the table and, and talking about it. I mean, what what's the big problem with doing that and, and trying to sort out? It's kind of like one team does it to the other and then they kind of return the favour, right? Well, if we're not having our fans, you're not having your fans. And it's just kind of tit for tat. It's just, it's just not ideal. When the, the game's at its best is when both sets of supporters are in there, like Hamden. And well, I'm not a massive fan of Hamden in, in terms of the layout, how far away it is from the pitch. But when you're talking about Celtic Park and Ibrox, where it's quite close, that's where the atmosphere is. That's You want to be part of that. So they have to get around and talk about it and, and kind of put the pettiness to the side. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, and just kind of, just on some some transfer talk from Rangers, we have spoken before about the the goalkeeper's position, Alan McGregor's future. It seems like he is going to retire at the end of the season. And McCrory has obviously come in. You and I have spoken about him before, even you know before the last the last couple of games. But it looks as though they're closing in on Butland. Do you think that? That'll be a, a bit of a disappointment for McCrory if you know he's had this good run and all of a sudden he's he's back to be not being first choice. Well, I think he needs to remember where he has where he is. I mean, he's at Rangers. There's always going to be competition for for places. It's quite as simple as that at the kind of top end. So he's been playing games. He's had a great opportunity. He's shown exactly what he can do. Some big moments in those games. Kept clean sheets as well. So he's definitely put his name forward. So it's really up to him now. I mean, Michael Beale's seen what he's all about. He can handle that occasion. So it's can he do it for a a long period of time and not make any mistakes? That's that's the big pressure on you. I always thought they would bring in a goalkeeper. I think they have to. Uh, you can't just go forward with possibly McLaughlin and McCrory. So it's now up to him uh, in pre-season when given that opportunity, whether it is Butland or somebody else who comes through the door, he has to be ready for the fight to show that he's capable of wearing that number one jersey. Yeah, I mean, do you think that that he'll be happy to to do that and wait around? I think towards the start, yes. I mean, I think is it twenty five ish? I think. Yeah. So it will definitely look. He will see this as an opportunity. He's played the the remaining games of the the season. Obviously, I, I don't think he'll play against Hearts. I think McGregor will come back in just for that one. But uh, he's played at a high standard, so it's up to him. Come pre season, he needs to be ready to go from obviously as soon as he walks through the door. Uh, and show the manager because he has got the capability of doing it but we haven't seen him long term uh, and if it doesn't quite work out he may look to go on loan uh, but then I'd, I would have thought Bill would want to keep him in the building because then he would need to bring somebody else in. Yeah and I mean just kind of on, on Butland I mean what do you what do you make of him? Do you think first of all he'll come in straight away and be number one? I would have thought so. I think when you think when you sign someone of that kind of quality, that experience, the, the level that he's played at, he'll be coming in to be number one. Uh, I know Palace has went on loan to, to Manchester United, obviously not played that much or anything, but he'll still see himself as a number one. I think it's much like the the heart signing for Celtic. I think he could be the same way for Rangers. You've got a real experienced goalkeeper that can deal with that sort of pressure situation. So I do believe that'd be a good signing. Yeah, I get that. Um... Yeah, and just some some other transfer rumours are Thierry Small, who 
He's obviously been been on um, been on loan in, in Scotland this season. He I think he costs I think he costs Southampton around the the five million mark. They're obviously relegated now. If he goes back in the summer, do you think that that could maybe be a bit of a, a bit of a bargain a bargain signing? Uh, possibly. I mean, it's never easy, is it, when you get relegated? I mean, players leave, players come in, they've got different ideas. There's opportunities there that open up to to go back and play uh, at the team. So it's an interesting one. I think there's, there'll be a lot of situations that are going to need ironed out when you get relegated. I've been there myself. It can be very difficult times. So you, you kind of have to wait and see, but there's always an opportunity. Yeah, definitely. And just on the on the current first team, it looks like Goldson's going to be out for a number of weeks now, which is obviously a giant a giant blow for Rangers. Um, I think I saw, I saw it's going to be a bit of a race to get him fit, even for the for the qualifiers in August for the Champions League. But do you think if they don't bring in reinforcements, or even if they do bring in reinforcements, you know they'll still he'll still be a, a really big miss for them moving forward. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I mean, he's the kind of vice captain. He's he's one of the leaders on the pitch. You can hear him roaring at his defence and his midfielders. He's he's a huge part of what Rangers do. And when he plays, they're a better team, in my opinion. Uh, although I thought Suter was outstanding uh, against Hibs. Young Leon King came in and done well. Obviously, you've got Davis still there. Golden has to play for me. Of course, it'll be a race to get him fit. Uh, if not, I think they do have people there. I think Beal will constantly be monitoring it, seeing if he does have to bring somebody else in. He probably will look to, if, I, if I'm honest, uh, for competition at the back line, but uh, he's your number one centre-back and, and they'll want him fit for the start of the season. Yeah, definitely. And we obviously have spoken at great length throughout the throughout the second half of the season about all these contracts up in the summer. Um, Jack is now... Signed that extension. I mean, do you think how how important do you think that is for Rangers to you know have him signed on for at least another season? Yeah, I think it's a no brainer for me. I mean, it's a real good decision. It's probably it's a strange one because Michael Beal came out a few months back and he said that everybody would be staying out with Morelos and was it McGregor? Yeah. So to to get to this situation and only one has has signed a new deal is a little bit strange, but I think he's a an important player again uh, for Rangers. Uh, it makes them stronger within that midfield. Again, there's going to be a lot of competition, I think, coming in this summer, especially the midfield area. So he'll have a battle on his hands. But I think when, when he's playing at the top of his game, he definitely fits into that Rangers midfield. And he's still got a lot to give. It's not like he's an older player. He was just running out of contract, if you like. So to have him sign on for another year, I think it's a good deal for Rangers. Yeah, and I suppose it would be good to have him with the likes. As you know, we've spoken before about Beale's kind of target player as this young, up and coming type of player, and you know it would be good, I'm sure, to have Jack in there with all his experience and big game experience to, to I suppose, nurture those younger players that are coming that are coming through. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we did. We spoke about it before, and I think that the players that are leaving have got a wealth of experience. They've played in European competition against Celtic Cup finals, won leagues, all this sort of stuff. So to get rid of the, not get rid of those players, that's the wrong word, but for them to leave the club and not bring in experience and bring in a certain profile of player which is younger that you can mould and develop, I think you need certain people round about within the squad that can help them through difficult situations, which will occur throughout a long season so you need experience within your squad what do you think from from rangers point of view they need to do ahead of a, a pretty big champions league campaign that's if they get there i mean obviously yeah. got, uh, you need to qualify for it's different for celtic or straight in but i think under geo you seen the, the quality was night and day compared to where they were as a team i know the tactics come into it and everything else but uh the quality level needs to go up. And I think you need, Rangers probably needed that now, that kind of change in personnel, the kind of youthfulness to come through, the type of player that Michael Beale likes, a player that comes in and plays with freedom. They're not restricted to playing five at the back and, and different things to try and contain teams. So I think Michael Beale will help moving forward, but of course they, they, need to, they need quality players in also to help. 